Jolene here with Home Stitchery Decor. I am from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I make farmhouse DIY decor in my basement. I sell it online in local stores and at local farmers markets. And I also have an Etsy shop, so you can check things out there. So in today's video, I'm just going to give you a brief breakdown of some changes that have been made so you know where to find me. And it's been a hot minute, hasn't it, uh, since I showed you around a little bit in the studio. Um, so I'm just restocking for farmer's markets today. And I thought, oh gosh, I'll just turn on the camera here and let you guys see what has been happening because as usual, it's a lot. Um, that's kind of the way I roll. Okay, so um, if you haven't been here before, I started out with the rugs. They look like this. Um, some people call them jelly roll rugs. I call them farmhouse rugs. Um, I don't always use a jelly roll to make mine, which is why mine are called farmhouse rugs. Um, you can buy jelly rolls at local quilt shops and you can uh, purchase fabric by the meter and make these rugs. And I will put a link in the video description for the video uh, tutorial for this rug. So it's there. It's my most popular video. Okay, so speaking of most popular videos, I uh, reached over 10,000, 10,000 views for this tutorial, uh, which to me as a small business from Canada, is crazy. So I started my YouTube channel, um, I think it was like April of last year. And uh, just last week, it hit 10,000 views, which is for me is a huge milestone. So I'm celebrating it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who's been tuning into the channel. If you like it here, uh, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of all the goings on here at Home Stitchery Decor. So there's uh, the rug. I made this one this morning too. I have just been on a rug tear. Um, and then I also have made this gorgeous green one just this week. Um, so, okay, I'm just going to hold this one up here because I love this one so much for a minute. Okay, so with my YouTube channel, um, the goal of the YouTube channel for every, pretty much every creator is to reach 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours within a 365 day cycle. And then YouTube pays us. And um, as a small business, every view, every second you spend on my channel, I cannot even begin to tell you how much I appreciate it. So I'm about halfway there, uh, which is super exciting because I think it takes about two years to get monetized for some channels like the craft channels. And if I hadn't have started a year ago, I wouldn't be here now. And even though um, I'm not a real big fan of coming on camera, I'm like, suck it up, princess. Do you want to like have a craft business? Then, I mean, just do the things that they tell you to do. Okay, so I have the um, Jelly Roll rugs and they are for sale on my website. So I spent most of the winter uh, revamping and reworking my website so that uh, when you go on and you click on catalogs, there's a whole selection of products that are available under the catalogs. I know I need a little bit of work on the front page. I just did a tech upgrade um, so that uh, I could have SKUs visible. So you can search everything by SKU. And speaking of SKUs, what I've started doing is videotaping me sewing the rugs in silence. Um, because often I do it in the morning and nobody wants to, um, you know, see me with my hair up and pin curler still um, and drinking my morning coffee. But I did get a lot of requests for, can I see you make my rug? And so I thought, oh gosh, how am I going to do this without totally um, destroying my algorithm on my main channel? Because this is my main channel. Uh, so I started another channel and it's called Sewing, I think it's Sewing ASMR, which is auto sensory um, something or other. And basically I just sew the rugs on there. So I start from the beginning, which is the inside circle, and I film myself making the rug. And then in the videos, I put um, the skew for the rug. So I do make small quantities. Um, so you, the rug won't be for sale for forever because once it's sold, it's gone, right? Um, but if the person wants to purchase the rug for me and wants to watch their own video, on the tag I have on the rug for sale, I'm going to have a link to say, hey, do you know that you can watch 
me make this rug. You can watch it be sewn on this other channel um, over there. So it's starting to get some views, which is exciting. Maybe it'll be a secondary channel. Maybe it'll take off. I don't know. But the thing is, is that I have to sew the rugs anyway, right? So it, it's no big deal for me to turn on the camera when I'm sewing it. It's not that big of a deal to upload it to another uh, video channel because I already have the video channel. Um, so I'm doing that as well. And then um, I do have another uh, YouTube channel. So there's three actually, uh, and it's almost completely unrelated to my sewing, aside from the fact that I need something to do to relax and to listen and to like, stay in the zone. And I am a bit sensory um, sensitive. So I prefer not to have like television and a whole bunch of bangs. Often my phone is off for the entire day. Um, and I just do my work. Now, when I go to sew, sometimes I would like to just, you know, kind of get into the zone of it. So I started a channel called Soothing Sounds Therapy, which I will link in the video description too. And it's essentially um, just scenery shots. So like drone shots of ocean waves and then um, gentle music. So ambient music. And I play that in the background and I find it so much easier for me to concentrate so I made a channel for that um, just because I know that they, there's lots of money to be made on YouTube if you want to put content on there. And if I make my own videos, then there are music and things that I like. So I have a subscription for Epidemic Sound and the software I use to create the videos is called Camtasia. And the video clips I get are from Pexels. Um, although I do some of my own videos, sometimes if we're out and about and I'm near a river or something like that, I will take some scene shots and, uh, and create my own videos from that. So that's how I relax. Now, what else is going on? I mentioned Etsy. Okay. So I uh, linked my Shopify store to an Etsy account. I already had the Etsy account. It was on there forever. Um, basically I was selling Man the Mandela, um, SVG files on that shop. Um, I've gone ahead and taken the Mandela's off of that shop entirely because this is farmhouse decor and these are SVGs and it was confusing the algorithm. So I have a, a store, another Etsy store, if you can believe it, for Mandela's. It's called the Mandela SVG shop. So Mandela SVG shop and all of my patterns for Mandela's are available on there and they're also available on my website and I have more patterns, more patterns, more patterns coming all the time. So if you tell the computer too many things, okay, well, I'm a farmhouse rug lady and I'm a tea towel lady and I'm a dishcloth lady and I'm a dish drying mat lady, um, the algorithm just gets confused. So um, under some advice from a business coach, I've separated the two. And um, although you can purchase my SVGs directly from my website, you can't get them off my Etsy shop um, on the home stitchery decor shop anymore. Um, you have to go to Mandela shop SVG or a Mandela SVG shop. My apologies. Okay. So, um, then the reason that I integrated my farmhouse decor products over to Etsy is, uh, basically Etsy has some free traffic, right? So if you can learn how to do the algorithms and learn to do the tagging and learn to do the product descriptions, et cetera, et cetera, you can start getting some sales from Etsy and then, um, drive that traffic back to your own website at some point through mailers or whatever, right? Um, basically, you want to put your name all, out to the universe every single place that you can, as long as it is affordable and worth your time to do it. I know some people don't like Etsy feeds. Uh, they don't like the way Etsy sets up with having uh, non-handmade vendors, all that kind of stuff. Um, I really don't care about the politics whatsoever. Um, if I put my products out onto Etsy and they start generating income for me while I'm sitting at home, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So yesterday, um, I woke up and I had three Etsy orders and what a nice feeling it was to, uh, trot my bottom, uh, to the mailbox and put those, uh, orders in. Um, they came in overnight which is crazy. They were um, two soup bowl cozies and two tea towels on three orders. Um, so they're off and gone. And as you know, in my mailing thing, I've put my business card. I've told them that they can follow me on YouTube. Um, I've sent a thank you note, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the fees and whatever, um, essentially I kind of write it off. I'm going to either go to a farmer's market I'm going to sell online, I'm going to sell wholesale, I'm going to sell on commission stores, 
wherever you're selling, there's a price to do business. Etsy has its price. If you don't want to pay the price, then don't go on Etsy. Okay, so that's covered that. Oh, actually, I should tell you how I did it. So on Shopify, there's an app called Etsy Integration and Sync. That is the app that I used for it. Uh, the guys that run the app are from Nepal. They were super duper helpful because I don't have like just a regular store and I got it set up no problem. Okay, so another reason that I did that is I am branching into my own textile designs. I will, uh, maybe I'll put a picture right here somewhere here of textile designs. So I have four now. Um, I'm, I basically hire somebody online to bring my ideas to life and put them into the digital formats that I need them to go into because I only have so many hours in the day. So I send this girl a rough sketch and I say, okay, I need it to be in, um, you know, certain DPI. I need it to be in SVG, AI, et cetera. And then I can use that image um, as a repeatable pattern and put the patterns onto different products. So when you go and look onto uh, my website and to my Etsy store, you will start seeing that I now have uh, textile designs on products like huge living room rugs, um, dinner table napkins, uh, tea towels, uh, drying mats for your bathroom and shower curtains. There is literally an endless amount of print on demand products that you can purchase. So what happens with that is you find a provider. I like Printful, I like Printify, I like Redbubble, um, and I like Spoon, Spoon Flower. You put your designs onto their products by setting up an account on their websites, follow the links to link in your Shopify store, follow the links to link in your Etsy store, uh, do all your configuring of your pattern, whether you're gonna just blow it up or you're gonna repeat it order a sample of your products, and then make your products go live onto these platforms and set your commission rates um, or your profit ratio, I guess it would be not commission rates. So set your profit ratio. So the designs that you see on these products are my designs um, and they go along with the theme of home stitchery decor. I'm never gonna, um, you know, kind of go off the trail of my main focus, which is the farmhouse DIY decor. And I wanted um, more products that would complement my um, my line. So I've gone ahead and gone that route. Um, print on demand is very affordable as well for ordering products. So I cannot, li literally cannot produce the products um, at the rate that they can produce them or at the price that they can produce them. So for instance, if I was to order, you know, the polyester to make one shower curtain and then have it like screen printed or something. Um, it probably costs like, you know, five, $600 just to get one shower curtain done. Um, but they do it on mass and, um, it's a, you know, they have so many things set up for, um, you know, they're to save on packaging, to save on shipping, all that kind of stuff. So it's more cost efficient and better for the environment to do print on demand on some things. Of course, I'm always going to have some handmade items here as well. Okay. So now, where can we find all this stuff? So you, I've told you about the Shopify website. I've told you I've linked it over to Etsy. Uh, most of you know that I do some local farmer's markets. And if you're looking for me at a farmer's market, all you need to do is go to my website and click on local stores and markets, choose the market that you want to come to. A flyer will pop up and the dates, location, and time of that market appear on that flyer along with the GPS link. So if you open it up on your phone, you can literally drive to come see me. Um, today is July 29th. I will be at the Millerville Farmer's Market, uh, which is 25 minutes southwest of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And interesting fact, that's uh, they do a lot of shooting for the movie Heartland or the television series Heartland um, at the Millerville Ag Society. So I will be there tomorrow from 9 until 2 p.m. Now for local stores, um, I'm in Drumheller, Alberta, Canada in Collective House, which is um, like a collective of businesses in this store and on the top of the store it says stores by Maine and collective houses in that store so it's in downtown Drumheller there's a link on the flyer you can go check it out um, and I'm in there on uh, commission and then I have two wholesale accounts now that have both reached out to me which is fabulous cannot believe it um, I personally want to move away from commissions a little bit and I know each store has their own rules for each customer and they have to set up what they want to do. But for me, I would rather sell the product once on um, a 
wholesale rate to a store and then be done with it. I don't want to be checking commissions. I don't want to be doing the extra work. I don't want to be driving around. Um, so I've set up proposals for these uh, companies once they've approached me uh, with the terms and conditions that we are both comfortable with. And uh, one of the stores is called the Crafted Hand and it's in Kindersley, Saskatchewan. So she has a few collections in there. And another one is in Rocky Mountain House, Alberta, and it's called the Crafted Keep. I just went in there this week. Um, she's this girl. I mean, she's got it going on. You should see her store in Rocky Mountain House. Um, not that all the stores aren't good. I mean, I've been with Collective House for forever. So um, I love Charlotte at Collective House too. I don't know the lady in Kindersley, Saskatchewan too well. She seems really nice. Her stuff looks really great, um, but I just haven't had a chance to visit with her a lot um, other than to get some ordering going. But um, this new store in Rocky Mountain House, um, she has a massive collection of stuff in there. She does a whole bunch of social media and um, yeah, I'm excited to work with her. Her name's Jessica. So check it out if you're in Rocky Mountain House, Alberta. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. You can shop online. You can shop on Etsy. You can find me at a local farmer's market. Find me at the local stores. Okay, so... Uh, what else have we got going on? We've got a newsletter. So in the newsletter, uh, there's all the, you know, what's new at the zoo kind of thing here from Homestead Tree Decor. So if you want, go ahead, sign up for the newsletter. Promise not to spam you too much. Um, if you do find, uh, I'm not going to spam you. I mean, this is what I do. If you're here, I mean, come along for the ride. It's super fun. I, t I do the sewing thing, but I teach some business stuff as well. So follow along with the newsletter. Um, and if you're shopping for anything, if you're shopping through a link, I get paid. That's how it works. Um, so if you're shopping through an Amazon link that I share for a product, if you're shopping for, oh, I did this one earlier today. I did a video on this thing. It's called a Jackery. It's super heavy and it's portable power. It's lovely. Um, I use it at the farmer's markets to charge up all of my uh, gadgets. So I just did a video on this as well. Um, and there's links for it. And then I'm a Cricut affiliate and I'm an AccuQuilt affiliate and I'm a Sewing Machines Plus affiliate. So basically anytime I'm sharing a link for a product that I'm using in my business and you decide to purchase from it, I'm getting paid. I just want to let you guys know that. And gosh, I mean, really, that's it. This is the news, right? You haven't seen in the studio for a long time. Uh, I haven't shown it to you just, you know, because you get busy. But I really do appreciate y'all being here. And so thanks from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and we will see you all later. Mm -hmm.